What up, bitches? This is Chuck. Back for another video that's gonna blow your fucking mind. <laughs> but with Easter around the corner, I figured it was time that I uh, made a video that talked about the real roots of Easter and how it doesn't really have any biblical basis in the New Testament at least. Which is kind of odd because uh, the Christian church tells you that this is all a celebration of Jesus and all this good stuff and yet there's nothing about uh, Easter in the New Testament. Hmm, that's kind of odd. And that's because these holidays are nothing more than repackaged pagan holidays that have been recycled and passed off as another god or holiday. That's what all of these these religions do. Christianity and almost all religions just take bits and pieces of the religions that come before them and then leave behind certain pieces. But that's what this is about and that's what you know Easter is about. It goes back to your Old Testament. It doesn't have anything to do with your New Testament. Sorry Christians, backwards Bible reading barbarians of Babylon. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with your old your New Testament. It's from your Old Testament. But what this really where this really starts is early, early, early in your Bible. And what this goes back to is you know, what I just said about taking bits and pieces of gods and religions and, you know, modifying them and changing them a little bit, but keeping pieces of it. And that's what's going on here. And that's what Easter is. It really starts in your Old Testament. And it starts with the Canaanites. You know, this is early, early, early in your Bible. You know, the Canaanites uh, were worshiping the god Baal, as I talked about in my video, Satan and Babylon. And also what I talked about in my video, Satan and Babylon, applies here. And how Baal, which was, again, the Canaanite deity of fertility, amongst other things. But amongst other things, Baal and uh, these other gods got taken and then modified. Baal was taken, and then it became Baalzebub, which is in the back of your Bible, your King James Version Bible. Baalzebub, B-A-A-L Zebub. And then it became Beelzebub, B-E-E-L Zebub, which is another part of your Bible that's right in the back there, which is in the New Testament. So, like I said, all of these things have a lineage that starts in the Old Testament and is carried on all the way through, and it's the same thing here. What's going on here is the Canaanites worship Baal. And the wife of Baal was Ashtar. And this is in the back of your Bible under Canaanites. And at his wife Ashtar, this is talking about Baal, his wife Ashtar was the goddess of battle, often confused with Asherah, who was the uh, mother of Baal. But Baal was, amongst other things, he was a Canaanite deity of fertility and the harvest. But he's right in here also. The word means Lord or Master. And again, this goes back to the Lord of this world. And all these things are about Lord. You know, even Enki from Sumerian mythology was Lord of the earth. So, like I said, it all goes back to the Lord. But anyway, it all started with Ashtart. A-S-H-T-A-R-T. And that was the wife of Baal. And the Canaanites, this they didn't actually mention Ashtart in the Bible. But Exodus 34, 13 through 16 has references to Asherah poles, who I said was the mother of Baal. So Ashtar actually isn't mentioned in the Bible, except for in the back. But it's all right there in the back of your King James Bible. Then what happened is it became Ashtar. Ashtar was a goddess of fertility that was celebrated in the state of Tyre. Tyre is another important part of the Bible that's mentioned in Isaiah. And also, amongst other things in the beginning, there's a connection between Hiram Abiff and Solomon's temple, who Hiram Abiff is the mason's first martyr and of Solomon's temple. You know, like I said, he was the builder of Solomon's temple. I, mean, he's, I think in mention, he's called uh, Huram Abi in the King James Version, but this all goes back to the state of Tyre. And also there's a prophecy against Tyre in Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. But Ashtar, which is exactly like Ashtar, only minus the T. And like I said, this is the same, almost the exact same thing, minus one letter. 
but Ashtar was a fertility goddess. Again, you know this you know this applies to Easter, and will apply even more. But uh, you know, all of this stuff is just taken and repackaged under a different name that's just changed a little bit. And this is the same thing, Ashtar. Now it's Ashtar, being you know it's a deity being celebrated in the state of Tyre. Then it became. Ishtar, who's the queen of heaven, that's mentioned in Jeremiah 7, 18, and 44, 17 through 18. And Ishtar was an Assyrian and Babylonian deity, and she's the goddess of fertility also. Again, this is a fertility. It's very important to remember that and apply that to Easter that's coming. But again, this is just another repackaged deity that's just being carried on. Start off with the Canaanites, then it to the state of Tyre. Now we're talking about Babylon and Ishtar. Ashtar, Ashtar, Ishtar. It's almost the exact same word. And again, it, the Ashtar was goddess of fertility. Ishtar is the goddess of fertility. And Ishtar is actually mentioned as the queen of heaven in the Jeremiah that I just mentioned. So that's where all this stuff comes from. Easter doesn't have to do with your New Testament and Jesus, though the church would like to have you believe that. It goes back to the Old Testament and all the celebration of these other deities. But the one that was the you know most recent before it became Easter, at least in the Bible, there was other deities, you know, like Esther, E-O-S-T-R-E, that was another goddess of fertility. There's many other gods and goddesses that were, you know, taken from this stuff too. But in the Bible, Ishtar is the Babylonian deity, and that's mentioned in Jeremiah, and then we're talking about Easter. You know, so basically Ishtar was a Babylonian celebration. So then think about Easter. This is the celebration of the morning star, the sun of the morning, the sun of the dawn, the star of the morning, O shining one, the light giver, Lucifer, whatever 14, 12 Isaiah reference you want to use, they're all talking about the sun, S-U-N sun, the sun of the morning, sun of the dawn. And that's what Easter is. It's a celebration of the vernal equinox, cycle of the sun. Then what do you do on Easter? You have the Easter egg hunt, Easter eggs. Fertility goes back to fertility goddesses, Ashtar and Ishtar. Then what do you have? The Easter bunny. This is again a sign of fertility because of bunnies and their amazing ability to reproduce. And it's celebrated during the vernal equinox, which is a time of seasonal rebirth. It's spring. So it's all about rebirth and fertility. And that's where it comes from. Ashtar, Ashtar, Ishtar. So it's all right there. This stuff is in your Bible or in the back of your Bible. Ashtar is actually uh, mentioned in the back of your Bible under Tyre. T-Y-R-E. It's in the back of your King James Bible. So, but like I said, man, all this stuff comes from your Old Testament. It doesn't come from your New Testament. It is a celebration of the morning star. And it's also a continuation of the Babylon deity Ishtar and the celebration of Ishtar and all this stuff has to do with fertility and that's why we have Easter eggs and the Easter bunny fertility and it's also during the vernal equinox the cycle of the sun the morning star sun of the dawn and that's because Jesus is Satan the morning star that's because the two stories of creation in Genesis are not about the same creation the Lord God that made Adam and Eve is Satan the Lord of this world so it's all right there you know that's what Easter is about and it does have Easter, I think I said in one of my videos off the top of my head that it didn't have a biblical basis, but it does. An Old Testament biblical basis, not a New Testament. So, happy Easter. Enjoy. Enjoy uh, celebrating your Babylonian deity on your Babylonian holiday, Christians. Top of the morning, start to you.